Good, well, not good morning. Well, yeah, good morning. I don't know when you're watching this. What the heck? Uh, today, let's talk about the function y equals tangent x. Or, of course, y equals tangent theta. Or f of x equals tangent theta. All the same thing in terms of practical, uh, practical use, especially when we're just going to graph it. So, uh, Let's go here. Let's draw this. In this particular case, since it's the parent function, uh, we're going to look at just some specific points. So much like the sine function we think of now, hopefully, looks like this. And cosine looks like that. Um, hopefully, we can get into our heads that tangent generally looks like this. Okay? Now, tangent y equals tangent x is also a periodic function and meaning that it repeats and I can tell you easily that this section repeats. So, if I think about it like this, this section repeats and it repeats and there's still this dotted purple line that goes right there and right there so we'll talk about the dotted purple lines in a second let's simplify this uh, so it's not so cluttered and busy etc etc so undo 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 let's get rid of those purple lines for now Okay, and let's just talk about this. Okay, so one of so you know with the uh, y equals oops crazy 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 with y equals sine x and y equals cosine x most of the time if not all the time I'm interested in you graphing a single period of that function and of course then we went crazy and did all of this stuff with a B, C, and D. Again, A and B either compress or stretch it in a particular direction, and C, which means A and B are really talking about the nature or how the function looks, and C and D just takes that function, irrespective of how it looks, and slides it left or right, horizontal translation or phase shift, or horizontal shift, however you want to for, refer to it, and D is vertical shift. So we can do all those same crazy things to this function, y equals tangent x. But we need to first understand and get very comfortable, if you will prefer, memorize the five critical points that make up y equals tangent x. All right? So let's, again, declutter. And I thought this was going to be quick. Hopefully it will still be. Uh, without any translation, y equals tangent x goes right through the origin right there. Because if I plot points, just to be explanatory, um, if I put 0 in for x, remember the unit circle, 0 has the point comma 1 comma 0, and tangent is y over x, that means I'm going to get 0 over 1, which is 0. Okay? So, if I put 0 on for x, I get 0 for y. What happens if I put in uh, pi over 2 for x? So that means we're up here, and we have the point 0, comma 1, and, um, yeah, the point 0, comma 1, which if I take the tangent of, it's y over x, so that's 1 over 0, which we should clearly know that is undefined. That means also that there is no point plotted at pi over 2. That's where this is actually occurring. We don't, we do not have a point plotted at pi over two, ever, up here, down here. So how do we know that this curve looks like this? We have to plot some other points. So let me grab a bunch of this stuff and move it over just a little bit and erase this because I'm getting jammed up over here. So let's try 
the distance is halfway between 0 and pi over 2, which you should know. If this is 90 degrees, that's 45 degrees, which means we're talking about pi over 4. So pi over 4 is here. Uh, the coordinates for a point that the terminal side intersects the unit circle is radical 2 over 2 comma radical 2 over 2. Remember our special rate triangle and its side lengths if the radius is 1 gives us those values, right? Okay. So that was a quick review of the unit circle. Let's get those coordinates back up. Okay. So radical 2 over 2. So the tangent of pi over 4, radical 2 divided by radical 2, so it's y divided by x, I'm going to get 1. So when I come over, which is halfway, the, halfway between 0 and pi over 2, again, pi over 4, I'm going to go up, a, up the y-axis a distance of 1. Let's look at one of our pretty values, the next pretty value, which is pi over 3. That's 60 degrees. It's somewhere right around here-ish. So I'm going to try to jam it in up here. Pi over 3, that's this angle, 60 degrees, as you may recall. This is 1 half, and this is radical 3 over 2. So we get radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which is simply, I don't know what that is. I pushed a button, I think. Radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which turns out to be radical 3. If you're not sure, radical 3 is about 1.7 blah blah blah. So we're up here. And that we only went over 1 fourth of the distance, but we went up almost this amount because we went up 1, then we went up 1.7. So what's happening is, as we move over a certain increment, we're moving up the y-axis faster. So if I choose the ha distance halfway between, oh, this wasn't halfway between, uh, wasn't even a quarter of the distance, and we shot up almost double the distance. So as we go, this will creep up faster and faster. Sort of like when you did when you were working with parabolas last year. When I go up one, I go up one. When I go over two, I shoot up four. Okay. So there's a faster movement up the y-axis than there is along the x-axis. If we, I'm going to have to erase some of this, if we went and repeated this whole process, and I'll try to do it quickly, with negative values, we have 0, which is still 0, but if I went uh, to negative pi over 4, that would be here-ish. That means I'm talking about this angle. And so this distance is radical 2 over 2, but it's negative, and this distance is still radical 2 over 2. And so what do we get when we take the tangent of negative 45 degrees or the tangent of negative pi over 4? We end up getting negative 1. Oops. My scale isn't that great, but there you go, negative 1. What do you think we're going to get if we look at negative pi over 2? which is down here. We are going to get undefined again. So that's causing this thing. So these purple dotted lines, hopefully recall, are called asymptotes. We do not have any values at the asymptotes. So one thing that's different about tangent that's not the same as cosine and sine and cosine is the function is not continuous. That means that I have to pick up the pen to keep keep writing the function. So I have to do this, and then I have to do that, then I have to do that. But this, these asymptotes continue to repeat. And that's pretty much it for the tangent function. I didn't want to do that. That's pretty much it for the tangent function or the parent function y equals tangent x. We can do all of those same things that we were doing with sine and cosine. So if I had a function that was y equals 7 tangent x, that would make this skinnier. So it would probably look something like this. 
okay? y equals negative 3 tangent x. What would that do? Hopefully you would think about all these negative values would now be positive. All these positive values would now be negative. So it would look exactly like the green one, except it would be upside down or flipped, as you guys say. If I said y equals tangent x plus 3, that 3 is being added like the d value. So that would just take my tangent function and shift it up three units, right? I'm getting crazy busy up here. But all of those a, b, c's, and d's would function the exact same way as they did with sine and cosine. So here's the question I'm going to ask you about uh, in the Google form or whatever I'm using these days. Well, let's put some numbers in there. Uh, y equals negative 6 tangent 3x minus... 2 pi plus 4. So hit pause right now. Copy that down. Unpause. It'll be the end of the video. And uh, hit the Google form.